Hello, I come straight to the thing. The FFT versus time is an often used analysis to determine the frequency in a measurement signal. With it, there's often this difficulty tightrope walk between a high frequency resolution, but also a necessary time resolution. I'll show you a trick how you can get much sharper and more precise results for your measurements than with a conventional FFT. Get a frequency resolution up to 16 times higher and a time resolution that can be increased independently and almost unlimitedly. You will like this. During this motor run-up, for example, you will see that the selected block length is too large. Here the speed and thus also the frequency changes within a block, so that with this run-up again and again such individual points arise. I cannot analyze a clean level history over RPM. I must use a shorter block size. With this setting I have now, I get a continuous level which I can evaluate. But the frequency resolution still leaves a lot to be desired. So I can hardly separate the sixth order from the fifth or the five and a half. They blur into each other. But also the second order causes problems. It's not in sharp focus. The energy is distributed here in a range from 1.8 to 2.2 orders. In order to have the order cut I want, I have to try very generously to sum up all the energies again. In short, I'm dissatisfied with this analysis. I want to have more. And here comes now my little trick. Instead of a normal FFT analysis, I now choose the HSA, High Resolution Spectral Analysis. At first sight, the HSA is much tidier. It's not this carpet of colors that jumps at you. Secondly, the frequency resolution is outrageously high. The order lines are as wide as the cursor line. Second order, fourth order, but also fifth, fifth and a half order are clearly separated from each other. I emphasize that I'm using the identical frequency and color scaling here. The difference becomes particularly clear at the low frequency. While the FFT falls victim to its limited time frequency resolution, the HSA simultaneously offers both high frequency resolution and high time resolution. Even the smaller speed fluctuations during law changes are still detectable in the course of the second order. What is he saying? That's not possible! I would explain with a simple example what an FFT does and which error it makes. And then, step by step, what an HSA does differently, makes better. I have here an FFT analysis of a constantly running engine and I see dominant orders appearing again and again. But there's always a fog around them, so there's a question. And also every single order should be a clear thin line. Instead, it is always fattened up so artificially. But why is that with the FFT? I explain it with a simple diagram. This is our measurement signal we like to analyze. And the first thing the FFT analysis does is put a window over it. This has the effect that in the beginning and in the end of our signal we get zero. This is the basic prerequisite for being able to perform a Fourier transformation. But this brings consequences. We have interfered with our real signal and therefore the results changes accordingly. We would wish that we can get a result like this. At 1000 Hz a clear sinus tone because this was the original signal. In reality, by the convolution of the window over its spectrum, we get a result like this. It becomes broader and more club-like. It's a bit of a mess. It's this frequency resolution that comes from the fact that we put the windowing on it. And even worse, we always get these side loops. Symmetrically, left and right from the main signal, we get these artificial ghost effects, which aren't there in the original signal. This is a misinterpretation caused by the windowing. And that is what we see here. The HSA now goes one step further and uses this knowledge about this arrow. It knows what this window does to the frequency resolution and undoes it. The convolution. We know that the pure sinus tone will look like this with this used windowing. Every time. So when I see this shape in my FFT analysis, then I know by conclusion that this was the original signal. And then I can correct it for each individual tone step by step through the measurement. And that is the first step in the HSA. Let's look at an example. Already in this first comparison I see that the HSA appears less smeared than is always the case with an FFT. That is the effect. You can see that quite well, especially down here with these first basic orders that we have here. This is shown much sharper. So here the error from the Henning windowing is already eliminated. 
but there's even more to it than that. We now have four more tuning measures to achieve even better results. If the windowing doesn't produce any error anymore, then I can use several windows on the same time snippet. Different windows, double the size, four times the size, eight or 16 times the size, getting higher frequency resolution, but the time resolution stays the same because I always use on the same time snippet. This I can set up here. Let's just go to, I'm not exaggerating, four times the frequency resolution I would like to have and calculate it again in comparison. If you see immediately what is still so white here is now really sharp here. I can resolve the individual frequencies. Everything that sound produces because all this mud is taken out here in the HSA. Everything that is white and also the side loops. Everything is removed and only a clear line remains. That was the original signal. And I can do this several times now. I found it for one tone, okay, it's fine. But there's more in it, go check, there's another frequency. What is the original frequency from that? Second, third, fourth iteration. Every time we find the original signal in the measurement and replace it. The number of iterations here set on six. That's why I have one, two, three, four, five, six lines in here. These are my main orders and that is what I want to concentrate on here. And now comes the third and most important measure. I can suppress the background noise. Everything I'm not interested in anyway, you shouldn't show me at all. And that is the very big step where you don't see all the trash anymore. But I see clearly here is one tone and here you can see very well, here are two tones. In the FFT that is mixed up. I could not have separated them. Here you can clearly see from the enormously increased frequency resolution that we have two tones here that are very close together. Yes, but, but this results in completely different values. No, they do not. Here the third order, 73.82 decibel or 70.39 decibel. Let's get blurred quickly to a wide frequency resolution. The real value cannot be determined at all because then I would have to edit and or sum it up. Different with the HSA. If I go here with the same cursor, I get a value of 75.52, exactly at this point. Directly next to it, minus 266 decibel, this is zero. And above it, it is zero. Which means that I have exactly 75.09 decibel on the order with the order width of an hundredth of an order. This is a very similar value. It's not the same because it is more correct. The FFT analysis can't estimate the right value because it's, there's always this error due to the windering. Here, the HSA calculates the error and correct the level. It will always be more correct to the original signal than an FFT can ever provide. We get better and more accurate values from the HSA. It is especially noticeable here where all the frequency lap together like this. If I let the cursor move over it, I can't separate which level 78.6 come from which order. This is all smeared into each other. The two main lobes lie on inside the other. The exact value is 76.15 decibel, 79.31 decibel. This is the sixth order. Hold on. I can increase the frequency resolution in my FFT by making the window wide longer. Yes, that's correct. But this is only possible if the signal has the whole time the constant level and the constant tone, RPM speed. On a run up, we have a massive problem as I showed you at the beginning. We come to the fourth tuning measures in the HSA, the overlap. Because it doesn't make any mistakes with my windowing, I can nest as many windows as I want. Not just this 50% Henning stuff, no, just 95%. It doesn't hurt. Costs a little bit more computing time, not enough for a coffee, but it gives you even much better time resolution. Look. If I do that with an FFT, as happens here, also 90% applied here, then I always get a clustering duck, 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 duck. That's not what I'm hearing. But it doesn't get the frequency, has a worse frequency resolution, that is all the time, and put this on top of each other, but. But where are the limits of the HSA? I've taken the most difficult measurement example I can imagine. A bird in the mating season. I just play it back. An unbelievable fast sequence of varying tones a machine could never produce. Let's see what the HSA can resolve here. Give it a try. Now we have to give it our all. So I take FFT versus time and the HSA versus time. 
we have to tune it up first. That means the window size, that's as fast. I have to reduce the block size, 256, which of course completely destroys the frequency resolution. So I get that back by simply doing maximum oversampling here. Then I have 16 times higher frequency resolution again. I only need one tone. I want to track it. Background noise, no, we don't need it. And now overlap, yeah, what's possible? 99%. We actually see a sound here that varies very quickly at different jump heights. But is that real? Or maybe there are some artifacts that the strange analysis just to get out of it? And I should believe that? We check this now by listening to it at the same time. So I play back the sound. It's so fast, I can't even hear what I'm looking at so fast. That's why we have to reduce the playback speed considerably. And play it again now. This is exactly what the bird does. I can analyze every single sound modulation that I can even hear only in slow motion in the HSA, precisely, level accurate, time accurate. There are no limits. And that is why I like the HSA. One more time the FFT, just to get out of the habit. Play it slowly once in a while. <laughs> yeah, there was a sound. Surrender. You can't surrender. <laughs> it's, it's over. I use the HSA analysis if I want to make frequency cuts for my signal. This goes for vibration channels and also for airborne channels. It's a big advantage to separate even close orders precisely and get the correct values. Like in this example from the Praxis, this is a recording of an MRT. That is the best FFT setting I can find. And here you see the best HSA setting I can set on. This is a game changer. Why should I bother with an old FFT if I can have it so much better? If you want to get started with the HSA, I put all the information in the description box. Get your noise right. <laughs>